so welcome back. So today what we're going to do is we're going to cover some more of the BSP edit tools. In our first video we covered a few of them but that video was getting a little bit too long and uh, you know really 40 minutes on how to edit BSP would have been probably more than most people can handle. So I'm going to break it down to two videos and today we're going to cover the edit uh, function, the uh, brush clip function and finally the lathe tool. So uh, we're going to look at those today. So let's get started here real quick. So we're going to start off uh, by going up to our modes uh, panel here and we're going to hit geometry and we're just going to drag in a box and there it is there and let's get it on major grid lines. Now one thing you will learn about the uh, Unreal Editor is there's more than one way to do most things that we need to do. And uh, this is very true here for some of these gizmos. And as we know we've got these gizmos here and this is our translation tool and this allows us to move our BSP around. And we can toggle through our translation tool, oh, sorry, our gizmos by hitting the, uh, well as our W key is our translation tool for moving. Our E key is for a rotation tool. Here we can see we can rotate it. And then finally we can hit our, let's see here, R key and then that's our scale tool. So that's one way we can uh, translate, we can uh, rotate, and we can scale. But as we know, there's other ways of doing it. That is, we can uh, actually go in here, if we select this guy, down here to here in this details panel, we can, uh, well, we can translate it by um, giving it actual location uh, grids. We can rotate it here, and we can also scale it here. Or we can actually um, use these values here if we know our values. So if we take a look at here in our little uh, quasi-render window, and uh, we change these values as we know we can also um, you know resize things this way as well and our edit tool is just another way that we can resize this stuff now before we jump into this edit tool there's just one uh, other thing that i didn't want to cover here if for example uh, you do uh, click on something and uh, while you can't really find it in the map let's say you're down here or something like that if you hit the f key for foxtrot it does focus on the entity so that's a nice hot key to know so I'll just get you there real quick. Now another way we can also access these different gizmos is up here if we look and also what's interesting is if we click on the different windows uh, this little panel of uh, buttons actually follows along. We can see it's uh, jumping around but anyways we'll stay up here. And uh, if we select that box we can also get into these tools this way. So if we click this one there's our translation tool. If we click this one that's our rotation tool and up here that's our scale tool. And then these are further controls uh, for those three different gizmos. Like for example here, this is our translation tool. If we want to snap to grid, this enables or disables it. Strongly recommend that you leave it on snap to grid. And we can change our grid lines here if we want. So we'll just go to 10. And this is our, um, let's see here, our rotation tool. So we can uh, adjust um, sort of our parameters of our rotation. Again, disable, enable, snap to grid. I would leave that snap to grid. And then here we can decide on what degree increments we can rotate. And then similarly here for our scaling tool, again, snap to grid or off that. Again, I would leave it on snap to grid. And then here we can decide what increment uh, to scale with as well. And then this final control here, this camera speed, for example, if we go into this and we maximize it, uh, if we go both uh, buttons on our mouse and go sideways and forward and backwards, we can see we've got some movement here and it goes at a certain speed. And we can adjust that camera speed by going up here where my mouse is circling and we can pump this up to much faster if we want to jump around a little bit faster four seems to be a pretty good one though so we'll leave it on four and we just use the slider there we go okay and our camera's back to four speed so that looks pretty good all right so let's have a look at this edit tool real quick so there is our box and actually let's uh, go down to this window hit our f key to focus in on it and there it is and let's go here Okay, there's one thing that you have to know off the top. When we're in our edit tool and uh, we've clicked it here and we just click this box here, geometry editing, while well, it's also shift F, sorry, shift five will get us there as well. And um, we hit our editor here, we've got it here. And what we want to do is grab a face. And what you might find is, although this face is grabbed, we don't get the gizmo there. So we can't edit this actually and we can't extrude it, et cetera, et cetera. Why can I not grab this face? Well, there's a very little unknown hotkey here that we have to hit, and that's the T for Tango. And that toggles translucency. And I'm assuming if it's, if it's not, or sorry, if it isn't translucent mode, therefore it sees this phase as translucent, so you cannot select it. And that is so annoying and frustrating. And if you don't know this, uh, it becomes so frustrating. So if I hit that T key, and it toggles it translucent, now you can see I can grab that face. So just keep that one in mind. Very important, that T key. All right, so once we're in the edit mode, we can actually click faces and we can edit them this way. We can drag them. It almost looks like the extrude tool, but it's not creating segments. 
Okay, but that way we can also scale through our edit tool. So we can grab faces. We can see here that we can drag those out. Or what we can do also is grab edges. Now sometimes it's a little tough to grab edges and we might actually want to use our translation tool here. So if I hit T again, it's a little bit easier to grab that edge. And we can see we can drag that edge now if we want. Now I'm not exactly sure why you'd want to do that, but I guess shapes, uh, well, if you're working on geometry, then uh, there that is. And we can also grab multiple, like, you know, selections. If we grab this and we hit our control key and left mouse button, we can click more than one edge and just make sure they're yellow. Can I do that? There we are. They're both selected. Now we can drag them both. So, yeah, kind of like the same thing as a face. And then finally, we can also grab verts, vertices. So we can grab that little guy there and pull him up if we want. And again, create kind of an odd shape. So, again, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. But, uh, you know, again, those are all the different controls for the edit tool. And the edit tool is handy because we can be very precise. For example, if we do select, uh, well, in this orthographic view and we select this face, we can just go up grids if we want. We can be very precise. If we don't have actual values, that is, if we can't go in here and have actual values, we can come up into this edit tool and then we can edit it very carefully. So, all right, so that covers the edit tool. <clears throat> Let's have a look at this clip brush. All right, so here's our, uh, our little BSP box. And the clip brush is very similar to the clip tool in Doom 3. Basically, once we select it, uh, and we've got our entity, well, we don't actually even have to select our entity. So once we collect, once we hit the clip brush, we get this little box on our cursor. What we want to do is we want to uh, create a line where we're going to cut this, this little BSP box. So I'm just going to go to the grid, and I'm going to roughly cut it in half. So once you got to uh, the starting point grid, just, uh, let's see here, left mouse button, and then hit the space bar. And you see that little red dot. Now we can drag out this cut. And then once I've got it cut, and you can see it's on either side of the box, I can hit the space key, and basically there it is. Now this is telling us that basically this BS pre brush that this red line intersects is going to be cut along this line here. And then this line that comes up here, this is the part that's going to be discarded depending on our settings. So for example, once we've got this uh, cut tool defined, and it's overlapping a BSP. And by the way, what's interesting, if we have BSP behind this box that we have here, it'll cut them all as long as we select them all. But uh, I'm not going to demonstrate that, but just to let you know, like if you want to cut a bunch of BSP anywhere this line intersects, anything that's behind it, as long as it's selected, it's going to clip. Okay, so once we have that, uh, the, that clip line defined, we want to select the box we want to clip. Then these two controls here. Now again, if we uh, hit apply here, it's going to discard this half of the box because this line is showing us. Now if we want to flip that, we can just hit flip normal. Well, let's demonstrate this first. So if we've got that uh, line defined and our BSP selected, if we hit apply, it's going to cut this brush here and it deletes it. So we've got just our little half brush left here. Now I'm just going to hit undo, control Z. Now if we want to flip that, for example, we want this bottom part to be gone, we just flip normal go there. Now we can hit apply and then you can see it disappears that bottom one or deletes that bottom one. So let's just hit um, undo again. Now let's say we just want to split that brush. We can click split here as we can see if we hit apply it splits them now and then if we deselect everything and we come out of here <clears throat> we can see that we can grab this and now we have two halves. So that that covers our clip brush. So let's just undo everything here and get back there. Okay, let's look at this little pesky extrude tool. All right, so this lathe tool. Now, I have to admit this lathe tool is a little tweaky. It doesn't always work for me, so we'll see if it does. I actually had to do an edit here because it was giving me a hard time. All right, so in order to sort of describe the lathe tool, if you've ever seen the way wood is turned on a lathe, basically how it works is a piece will rotate around a pivot point and then we kind of carve the outer edge and it creates this beautiful kind of lathe shape. So if you've never seen kind of the way wood is turned on a lathe, maybe have a quick look at a video. And conceptually, the lathe tool is kind of the same. So now before we can jump into the lathe tool, we actually have to go into our pen tool first. And then we want to make sure that this here create brush shape is clicked. Okay, make sure that's clicked. Otherwise, this isn't going to work properly. So let's just uh, slide that along there. So we're going to start off in this orthographic view and we're just going to draw out kind of a stair pattern. That's usually the way people uh, demonstrate this. So in order to get this pen tool to work, we're in the pen tool. What we want to do is uh, hover over a grid where we want to start. We want a left mouse button and then we want to click our uh, or hit our space key. And we can get, see we get a little green dot. Now, uh, when we demonstrated the pen tool before and we were extruding from the pen tool, it would give us a red dot. But here we're creating a brush, so it gives us a green dot. 
and we just drag this out using our mouse and then we get to the next coordinate that we want and space key again space here space here space here now let's say you make a mistake and you go there by accident just hit the escape key and it'll delete the last one you did so i'm going to keep going along here and i'm going to kind of draw this uh, stair shape if you will so let's go ahead and do this real quick and this is totally out of scale, of course. I'm just drawing it really big just for demonstration purposes. And the second last point, we can just hit enter and then it creates this brush. Now, this brush is kind of odd in that it doesn't show up in the map. It's more of just a pattern, if you will. So it's kind of an odd brush, but it gives us a template in order to use our lathe tool. So let's go ahead and click our lathe tool. Now, kind of hard to describe, but what I want this to do is I want it to pivot around this edge here and kind of create a circular pattern. And you'll see how this works in a second. But one thing that we have to do, which is really important, is we have to set a pivot point. So I go to the top view, and I want to pivot this basically in this, well, I want to make this symmetrical. So I'm going to count here. This is the middle of this brush, so it's one, two, three. So I'm going to count up one, two, three here, and I'm going to create my pivot point up here. And how you create the pivot point, and this is kind of handy in other editing features as well, is if you hit the Alt key and the middle mouse button, it'll move the gizmo over. All right, so there's our pivot point. And basically, this shape is going to extrude around this pivot point. So it's going to basically create an arc this way. And technically, you could put this pivot point anywhere. If you put it way out here, you kind of get a smush pattern. But if I go about halfway on this brush, it should give me a symmetrical shape. So that's all done. And then here, this uh, default total segment 16 and 4, you're going to have to experiment with this. It's kind of relative. It's kind of odd. This is basically the, um, the smoothness of it. And then this is how much, uh, how much it actually reaches around. So if we just leave it there and we've got it all set up, when we hit apply, if everything goes well, we should get that pattern. OK, and there it is. And it seems to be working for me this time. So if we look here, it's uh, basically, well, it's kind of odd because right now the normals are on the inside. So it looks kind of weird. Like you can see the normals are there, but we can, we can flip that around. So if we just go here to flip, we can flip those normals. Okay, there we go. And we can see we kind of get this sort of circular stair pattern. It's kind of weird. You know, if we wanted to smooth that out a little bit, what we could do is we can go undo. Let's go back out here. Let's set this pivot point again. So one, two, three, one, two, three, because we want it to get symmetrical. So Alt key, left mouse click. And then this time, let's set this to 24. We're going to smooth this out a little bit to 24. And let's go to 12. And this way, we should get kind of a half circle. Let's hit Apply, and let's see if it actually works. Oh, it did work. OK, well, it's not giving me a hard time this time. And there we go. Let's just flip those normals real quick. And then there we go. And it's kind of almost like stairs, if you will. And what's interesting, too, is we can actually um, resize this. So let's just toggle here if we smush it down. And we can resize it. And we, oops, we can almost get kind of like, well, stairs, if you will. I mean, you're going to have to uh, play with that scale, but there it is. And it's kind of weird. Now, honestly, you really don't want to be creating BSP brushes this intricately. This would be better to do in a 3D modeling program. But uh, again, just to kind of cover our basis for the BSP, let's show it anyways. OK, now one other thing I can do is if I set that pivot point differently, like right now I've got sort of kind of stairs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set that pivot point slightly differently. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to count down three and I'm going to put the pivot point down here. So let's select the brush if we can select it. There it is. So we're going to go one, two, and we're going to put the pivot point down here this time. So Alt, left mouse button, there it is there. And let's click apply and let's see if it actually works. Oh, it did work. OK, nice. All right, this is a really cooperating. Sometimes, again, it doesn't work. And now what we've got is almost like, well, we've almost got almost like an amphitheater style thing. Oh, let's translate that out just so it's not colliding. And there we go. We kind of get this almost amphitheater kind of thing, right? And again, we can smush it down a little bit to rescale it. But you could do that with your pen tool. So there it is. It's kind of almost like an amphitheater shape. So depending on where you put that pivot point. So and again, if we play with these values, we can get it to go right around and kind of create almost like a coliseum. Let's do that just for fun. All right, so here it is here. We're going to count down three, one, two, three. We're going to set our pivot point down here again, Alt, and we're going to hit middle mouse button. So there's our pivot point. And this time we're going to go 24 and 24. And again, you got to play with these values. I have to say I find this a little confusing. 
but if you play around with the values and experiment a little bit you'll kind of get the feel of it so let's go ahead apply now and there we should have kind of like almost like a quasi coliseum so let's see here let's get this out here i guess it could be a coliseum or a drain or i don't know something like that so and I don't know if that's confusing, but, uh, you know, it kind of gives a sense that it kind of lathes. So whatever pattern we have is going to be the outside pattern. It's going to sort of turn it around that pivot point. So, all right, so there it is. So that's the rest of your BSP edit tools, and that's really all you're going to need. I think in a future video, we'll show how to uh, apply materials to BSP, and then we're totally covered for BSP, and then you're ready to start building your map. So there it is.